This is Marissa Redenball, your Juvenile Services Librarian, and I'm here today to read you stories about this week's theme, camping. When I'm done reading the books, Rachel will come on and give you your craft. Let's get started. The first book we're going to be reading this week is called Camp Tiger, written by Susan Choi, illustrated by John Rocco. Every year, my mom and dad and brother and I go camping at Mountain Pond. We drive a long time on the highway and then a long time on roads that zigzag until we're on a road that's just dirt and rocks. The pine trees scrape the sides of our car. I think we're lost and the road zags and there is Mountain Pond like a mirror in the trees. It's September, the end of the summer. As soon as we get back from camping, we go back to school. My brother's starting fourth grade and I'm starting first grade. I don't want to be a first grader. I liked kindergarten. I liked choice time and building with blocks. I hope our camping trip never ends. We have a campsite on the far side of the pond with the big mountain starting behind it. My parents both really like it. It's so beautiful, they say, and so quiet. We take our stuff out of the car and talk about all the things we'll see. The eagle fishing for its dinner in the pond. The salamander with red spots on its back. And the chipmunks that come to steal food while we sit by our campfire. The air feels cool. I find a red leaf on the ground. While we're working on the tent, everything gets really still. My mom puts out her hand in the way that means don't move and don't talk. A tiger steps silently out of the woods and stands next to the stone fireplace. The tiger is orange with black stripes and has a stern face and big heavy paws. But it seems smaller than a tiger should be. It's still big like our neighbor's German Shepherd that scares me sometimes on the sidewalk. But for a tiger, it's small. It doesn't scare me. It also looks thin and it talks. Do you have an extra tent? asks the tiger. I have a cave, but I still feel cold. I know that we do. It's a two-person tent that we brought as a place for me and my brother to play if it rains. Yes, my dad finally says, while my mom stares at him. We'll set it up when we finish this one. We set up the two tents in silence. I notice that while we're working, the tiger starts acting like a cat a more regular cat. He sits down and grooms himself slowly, especially cleaning his paws. I don't see claws. He must have pulled them in. I think he's cleaning himself to make us feel more comfortable with him. It works. My mom keeps looking over at him and I can tell she thinks he's beautiful. When we're done, my dad holds out his arms in that goofy way of his that means, voila. Can you unzip it for me? The tiger asks. I look at his huge, heavy paws. My dad does and the tiger lowers his head and carefully steps in. I follow before my parents can stop me. Zip us in, please, I call back. You can zip it yourself, my mom says. Don't snag the fabric. All summer, things my mom used to do for me, like make my bed in the morning or fold up my clothes, have become things that I have to do myself. I can do them but I wish she would do them. This time though, I zip the tent quickly before she can make me come out. Inside the tent, the tiger lies down so he's shaped like a C and puts his head on his paws. I wrap my arms around him and bury my face in his fur. He smells like sunshine and pine needles. Tigers live in Africa, I tell him. Not Africa, Asia, he says. This isn't Africa or Asia, I tell him. No, sighs the tiger. All weekend, the tiger stays with us. When we hike on the trail, he walks first and his paws make no sound. He knows an overlook we've never found before, where we can see the tops of the green mountains stretching away. He's cautious around water, but he comes with us in our canoe. 
He sits very still, staring out at the shore. I barely have to reach down to trail my hand in the water. The canoe is riding low, my dad says. Because of the weight of the tiger, I guess. We paddle slowly so we won't tip over. You've grown too, my mom says. At the fishing spot, my brother catches a pumpkin can seed fish right away, which is what always happens. I don't want to fish, I say, sitting next to the tiger. No one makes me. But after a while, I get up and put bait on my hook. I hate fish, I say as I cast. I love fish, says the tiger. I'll eat any fish that you catch. I almost never catch any, I tell him. But today, I catch one. Just big enough to keep, says my dad when he measures. I'll eat it raw, says the tiger. I like to eat the whole thing and feel its tail swish around in my stomach. Ugh, we all say, but we're laughing. We never see other people. My mom says it's because it's late in the season. Even the park ranger never comes by. Our last night, my brother and I get to stay up extra late in the camp chairs and watch the fire until it dies out. I can see the tiger's eyes in the darkness like the very last embers. I want to look for shooting stars, I say. I want to go in the canoe in the dark and look up at the stars. No one seems to hear but the tiger. I'll take you, he says. Tiger pushes his paws through the sparkling black water instead of using a paddle. I steer, which I was never good at, except now I steer really well. I see the stars shining deep in the water and our canoe gliding high in the sky. And then we're back, and my mom and dad lift me into our tent, but not the tigers. I'm too tired to stop them. The next morning, the tiger is gone. He didn't say goodbye, I say. It's windy and cold, and that makes my eyes run and my throat feel thick, like I have a lump there. When my mom tries to give me oatmeal, I push it away. It's a wild animal, my dad says. It had to go back where it came from. You can go say goodbye to the lake, says my mom. I sit down by the water and put my head on my knees so my kneecaps press against my eyeballs. I hear my brother coming over to make fun of me, but instead, he just sits down nearby. Neither one of us says anything. Leaves fly off the trees as we drive down back out of the mountains. It's fall, says my mom. That means I'll be cold, I say. I think of the tiger shivering in his cave. When we get home that night, I draw the tiger exactly the way he looked. I'm going to take it to show my new teacher. Time for bed, my mom says, but I get her to give me five more minutes. I want to finish my picture before I forget. I thought that one had beautiful pictures and I hope you enjoyed it as well. The next one is called Tiny T-Rex and the Very Dark Dark by Jonathan Stutzman, illustrated by Jay Fleck. It is our first camp out in the backyard, and we are nervous. We have never slept outside before. We are mighty beasts. I am Rex. Pointy is a pointy, and Bob is my special squish. But even mighty beasts get scared if we can't sleep with our nighty lights. When I am inside, the dark doesn't seem so dark. But when I am outside, the dark is very dark. Outside, there are no nighty lights to turn on. And when there are no nighty lights, the grumbles and the nombies come out. Mother says, there's always a light shining somewhere tiny, even in the dark. If you are brave and look hard enough, you will find it. 
But it is hard to be brave when you are scared of the crawly creeps. And it is hard to look for something when you have your eyes shut. Pointy and I thought up a secret plan to be brave. When the very dark comes, we will be ready. First, we will build a hiding fort. To hide our snacks. And ourselves. I don't feel hidden. Next, we will make special helmets to protect our brains from the grumbles and zombies. I need a bigger helmet. The next part of the plan is the most important. We must hurry. We are running out of time. The crawly creeps are closing in. Tap, 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 tap. I hear the grumbles. They are close. Run, Pointy! The Nombies are here! Crunch, crunch, crunch. This is it. Our secret plan is almost ready. Now we will not be scared of the very dark dark because we have made a super bright nighty light. Our plan did not work. The very dark dark has got us. I am scared. Pointy is scared. Bob is scared. We are all scared together. Maybe we can be brave together too. Brave enough to open our eyes, look very, very hard. and find some light. The stars at night are always beautiful and sometimes they're very, very bright. The next book we're going to read is called Sunny the Bunny Goes to Camp by Jace Higgins and Paige Beckish. My name is Sunny and I like to bake. I am best at making red velvet cupcakes. I read lots of books. Bikes are fun too. Sometimes I'm frightened by things that are new. My mom signed me up for a camp this summer. I am thinking that it just might be a bummer. She said I'll have fun, but I am uneasy. Even thinking of camp makes me feel queasy. My mom hugs me tight and sends me away. I am leaving for camp. It is the first day. I walk out the door, then I say goodbye. I look at my mom, <sighs> let out a sigh. I get on the bus and sit in the back. It is a long ride, so I eat a snack. Inside my lunchbox, there are little treats. Packed in two baggies are carrots and beets. When we get to a camp, there is a big crowd. They cheer and they holler. It is very loud. I'm missing home, which makes me feel sad. I want to be with my mom and my dad. Now it is nighttime. We build a fire. Stack in the wood higher and higher. I am making new friends. It is only day one. I am starting to think that I might have some fun. I get a surprise. Now I feel better. My mom and my dad have sent me a letter. Sonny, we love you. We miss you so much. At home, we're all good, but please keep in touch. My, friends, my new friends and I are ready for sports. We grab a red ball and head to the courts. When we all arrive, I stand in a square. Then I pass the ball. It flies through the air. During ballet class, I learn some new moves. I work really hard. My spinning improves. At the end of class, we all put on shows. I watch my friend Panda on her tippy toes. We head back to camp where our counselors say, 
We planned something fun. Let us lead the way. We freeze in our tracks. I lean forward to see what all the good smells could possibly be. I see some popcorn being passed out. A movie is showing about a Cub Scout. I go to the lake and wear a life vest. I am sailing so well. My friends are impressed. We eat our lunches and nap for a while. When I wake up, I yawn and then smile. I like camp so much. I love every day. This place is so fun and I want to stay. I hop to my room and grab all my stuff. I need my hairbrush to puff up my fluff. The big camp party is themed Hawaiian. I get to dance with penguin and lion. At a big mountain's edge, we rappel and climb. After we finish, it is almost bedtime. We pack up our stuff and go to our beds. Dreams of tomorrow fill each of our heads. Now we are zip lining over the trees. My fluff is all messy because of the breeze. I am really nervous to go up so high. My friends say, it's fun. So I guess I will try. Tonight the event is our camp talent show. All my friends are here now and ready to go. My song won first place and everyone cheered. I have already picked out a tune for next year. We roll out our mats, then take puppy pose. We stretch out our legs and wiggle our toes. Time to pack up, we are going away. Camp is now over, it is our last day. I grab my camp trunk and head to the gate where all of the grown-ups eagerly wait. I see my parents and hug them so tight. I tell them the stories of each day and night. I get in the car and put on my belt. I tell them about the fears that I felt. I talk about all the good times that I had. I am going next year and I am so glad. I did make some friends and memories too. I am no longer scared by things that are new. Mom says, that's great. I am glad you have fun. We are so proud of you and love you a ton. I really liked how that one rhymed. I don't know if you noticed or not, but it had a nice sound to it. The last book for today is called Cece Loves Science and Adventure by Kimberly Durding and Shelley R. Johannes. Illustrations by Vashti Harrison. Cece loved being an adventure girl almost as much as she loved science. She couldn't wait to earn her camping pin. There was so much science she could explore in nature. In the past, Cece had run into trouble earning her Adventure Girl pins. The sewing challenge had her in stitches. The jewelry activity tangled her in knots. And the dance lesson totally tripped her up. But this time, Cece could finally put science to work. Cece packed everything on the checklist. Then she remembered what her science teacher, Miss Curie, said. Real scientists are always prepared. So Cece packed a few extra things, just in case. Cece's friends, Daisy and Caroline, were adventure girls too. Cece's mother was the group leader. And Cece's dog, Einstein, was their unofficial mascot. When Cece's mother saw Cece's heavy bag, she smiled. Looks like you had an extra checklist. It's good to be prepared, said Cece. Wait, we need one more thing. Sweet, cheered Caroline and Daisy. When the adventure girls reached the campground, Cece's mother handed them the camping pen worksheets. Cece read the next task out loud. Set up your campsite. Putting up this tent will be a breeze, Cece whispered to Einstein. But the wind did not agree. The adventure girls worked together as a team. I think you've earned a snack, said Cece's mom. Einstein gets one too. Finally, they had built a home away from home. Caroline looked at her worksheet. Time to go on a nature hike, she said. Daisy smiled. 
This is the fun part. I'll take pictures to track our route, said Cece, grabbing her digital camera. The adventure girls headed into the wilderness. Daisy found the perfect hiking stick. Caroline picked flowers, and Einstein led the pack. Cece took pictures of landmarks along the trail, a twisty oak tree, a dry riverbed, and a fork in the path. She also took one of a huge boulder that looked like a gnome with a mossy beard. All of a sudden, the sky grew darker. Uh-oh, said Daisy. I hope it doesn't rain, said Caroline. It's okay, Adventure Girls, said Cece's mom. Don't worry. But Cece wasn't so sure. She studied the gray clouds and remembered what she'd learned about weather during Miss Curie's meteorology lesson. Mom, I think a storm is coming, Cece said. The wind picked up and thunder boomed in the distance. Cece, you might be right, said her mom. Maybe the storm's far away, said Daisy. How can we tell, asked Caroline. Cece knew science could solve almost any problem. She told her friend about a trick Miss Curie had taught her. If we see lightning, we count the seconds until we hear thunder. Every five seconds equals one mile. Just then, lightning flashed across the sky. Daisy looked at her watch and they started counting. One Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi. When they reached 20, thunder rumbled again. That means the storm is still four miles away, Cece said. When thunder roars, go indoors, said Cece's mom. We'd better head back to camp. Cece's mom tried to map the route on her phone. My GPS isn't working, she said. Maybe it's a storm, said Daisy. I know, said Cece, holding up her camera. We can be detectives and use my pictures to make a map. Cece got a notebook and pencils from her backpack. The adventure girls drew a map and marked the spot where they thought their campsite would be. Suddenly, it started to pour. Oh no, yelled Daisy. We're getting soaked. We need to find someplace dry, said Cece's mom. I know, we can build a shelter, said Cece. Our rain ponchos can be the roof, said Caroline. Daisy, let's use your walking stick as a tent pole, said Cece. Soon the adventure girls had built a shelter. They climbed inside and huddled together to stay dry. Once the storm had passed, Cece's mom said, time to go. How long will it take? Daisy asked. I'm hungry. How far is it? Caroline asked. I'm tired. We can easily figure it out, said Cece. She showed them the photo of the twisty oak tree. That was really close to camp, said Daisy. The timestamp says one o'clock, says Caroline. Cece pulled up their group picture. Look, this one was taken at 1.45. Caroline pointed to the gnome rock, and we took it right there. So if we subtract one o'clock from 1.45, that means we're about 45 minutes away from camp, said Cece. That's not far at all, said Daisy. S'mores, here we come, said Caroline. 45 minutes later, the adventure girls arrived at their camp, ready to eat. But when Cece looked inside the tent, she found an empty marshmallow bag. Einstein, Cece's mom scolded. Mom, I don't think it was Einstein, said Cece, pointing to tracks in the mud. Look, something stole our snack, said Caroline. That means there's no s'more for us, said Daisy. Cece held up the graham crackers and chocolate bars. We'll just have to make chocolate sandwiches, she said. The adventure girls did a great job today, said Cece's mom. You all definitely earned your camping pens. And because you solved problems using science, technology, engineering, and math, I'm awarding you STEM pins too, even Einstein. Hooray, cheered Cece. Science rules. Daisy and Caroline hugged Cece. You saved the day, said Daisy. Thanks, Cece, said Caroline. Cece's mom smiled. Since you worked so well together, I'm also giving you a special pin, she said for teamwork. Cece smiled. Solving problems is always easier when you have a super team. And then these right here are different science facts that we learned about in the book. 
Well, that was our last book for today, and I hope you enjoyed them. Next up, Rachel will come on to explain this week's craft to you. Hi friends, I hope you enjoyed the stories about camping. That's kind of a fun activity that you can start to do as it gets warmer. So um, for your crafts this week, we've got, as usual, a curbside craft and a printable craft. For your curbside craft, you'll get a black piece of paper. It'll look like this, this is what your kit will look like. Black piece of paper, some uh, yellow, orange, reddish colors of um, tissue paper, little tiny square pieces a blue, um, brown strip of paper, and then three craft sticks and two stars, little foam sticker stars. So what you'll do is, um, I started out with my tent here, so I just glued the popsicle sticks wherever I wanted them, um, it's kind of centered on the page, and then um, just glued one down, glued one on top of that, and one over here in a little triangle shape, and it made like a, a tent. And then I put, um, I took my brown rectangle of paper and I just cut two little strips to look like logs. And then I took, I bunched up all the tissue paper together. So I kind of like stacked it on top of each other and then bunched it up like this. So um, that it, it was kind of together, but I like pinched it and then I kind of flowed out a little bit like, um, like a little, like a flower top. And then I glued that on there so that it looks like fire coming from the fire logs and then I glued my two stars here um, you'll either get gray stars or yellow stars and then um, I just drew the rest of the stars with yellow since it wasn't um, since it's black paper the yellow showed up really nicely or you could use white or even gray um, to do the rest of your stars and then you can feel free to add whatever else you want to your camping scene maybe you always grill hot dogs or something when you go camping so you could draw that on there this was just kind of a starter for you and then your printable craft is basically the same thing but um, all a printable version so your let's see here you'll get print something off that looks like this so these three rectangles here are your the sides of your tent just like the craft sticks and then the two brown rectangles are the logs, you've got your fire, your stars, and then this little opening for your tent. So um, I went ahead and colored the whole paper black so that it would kind of be like the curbside craft so that it would be like a night sky. Then I glued the three rectangles into a triangle shape. And then in the middle, it left like a, an opening. So this was like the, the opening that you would see if you're peeking out of the tent. And then um, I just colored the whole thing blue. And then you can color it whatever color you want. And then I colored my stars, I cut them out and I glued them in the sky. And then I cut out my logs, I colored those, colored my fire, cut those out, glued the logs crisscross, and then put the fire on top. So those are your two crafts for the camping this week, and we'll see you next time.